so many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of Newton's law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and the chain. you got to be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 5, slaves, we now we don't have that culture here, so let's change it to today's vernacular. Employees, obey your earthly masters or obey your earthly employers with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. What is the will of God? Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. What is the will of God in this scripture? Help me out. What is the will of God in the scripture? Serving your employer. So here's how you could look at your job. I am here to serve God as I serve this employer, which means I don't have to have a pat on the back every day from my employer, which means I don't have to be recognized as so-and-so, so-and-so, because I'm not doing it unto the employer, although I want to do it with excellence. I'm doing it unto God, and God will reward me. He will make sure that I am promoted either here or somewhere else. But if I operate in integrity before the Lord and I'm doing it unto the Lord and I'm doing the will of God, as this scripture says, wholeheartedly, I will be promoted. Now, going back to Timothy, if God told, or Paul told Timothy, God's system told Timothy to first test the people, you can be sure that's God's system. That's the system he uses. And you can be sure that although no one knows your name and you may be in, in some insignificant position in your mind, God knows you're there and knows your heart. King David was not always king. He was once a shepherd. And that is a measly position back in Israel's day, but he put his life of the line to fight the bear and the lion over a sheep, something they slaughter and eat. Why wouldn't he just let the bear have the sheep, Right? because he had a trust for his family that was their wealth in that day, was their livestock. And he risked his life when no one knew his name. When you honor an employer for God's sake, when no one knows your name and you're in a, quote, insignificant, what many would call a transitional job, you honor God, God knows it. God knows it. He knows your name. He knows where you're at. He created you. He knows, he knows the attitude of your heart. He knows what you think about the job. He, because he's watching to see how you respond to authority. Because he has a big plan for your life. And he knows if you do not respond to authority, authority here, you'll not be able to respond to his authority here. And he has to train you. So how, do God, how does God correct us? How does he train us? Luke chapter 16 tells us how he does it. Verse number one, Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because what? You cannot be manager any longer. Next to your notes, write the word disqualified. Now, which means you have a choice. You can be qualified or disqualified. The choice is yours. This man was disqualified, so inquiring minds want to know what disqualified him. Don't you? You need to know. So the manager, the guy that was being let go, said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. When I lose my job here, people will, uh, let's see, when I, I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 450. What is he doing? He is what? Stealing, right? Stealing. 
The master, verse 8, commends the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. What does that mean? The master says, basically, oh, so you have the capacity to put a plan in place to further your personal prosperity, your personal plan, your personal life. But you would not take that same creativity and manage my accounts the same way. You were wasting my stuff because it wasn't your stuff. Now, right now, if a shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have this attitude towards your employer, you need to fess up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It really is not about my employer. It's all about me. This is, his, this is why he was disqualified. It was all about him. Do you see that? He wasn't putting wholeheartedly himself into the creating of wealth for his master. He was not carrying out the trust that he was given faithfully on behalf of his master. Thus, he was disqualified. Now listen to what God says. This is what Jesus said in verse number 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? This is key. Write this down. It's always first the natural then the spiritual. The test always happens in the natural, then the spiritual promotion comes. You get it? The test always happens in how you handle earthly responsibilities under earthly authorities before, in, for, before God entrusts you with greater spiritual responsibilities for his kingdom because he is not interested in promoting someone that's disqualified wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. If you want a promotion, think how your boss would act if you gave your job wholeheartedly, your attention, your performance, your creativity, and you viewed it as if it was your own prosperity and your own money. And you took upon yourself to have the mindset of an owner, not a hireling. Do you know you would stick out like a light bulb on a solid dark night because you would be so different? You would be promoted, guaranteed. God will make sure of it. Wow. And if you've not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.